Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week, well, guess what? what? We are heading overseas. Yes, yeah, so we're going to head over the ocean to South Africa with Fricky to Toy Safaris. Now, we hunted with Fricky back in 1993. On our honeymoon, which seems like a hundred years ago. And we've hunted with him a lot of years in the 90s. We've all kind of grown and then up we, together. Yeah, and then we sort of took a break, RJ the whole nine yards, and well, guess what? We are we we returned to South Africa and we took our son RJ for his first ever African safari. Yeah, we have a lot of great footage we want to share with you guys and a lot of emotional stuff too, but this week's Lucky logo oh, is the best. real tree. Blend in anywhere, anytime. Real tree. So watch for the real tree logo at the end. Show we'll tell you what to do with that. But honestly, we should just get going. Yeah, there's there's so much and share with everyone. I, it just wow. It's memories. I think I, I got taller since then. No. First time we went down to South Africa was 1993 on our honeymoon and it was incredible. Lo and behold, in 1993, we met a young man, big tall dude, pretty strong, named Fricky DeToy. Now we met Fricky back in 1993 on our honeymoon. He was actually one of the PHs on Ralph's first Cape Buffalo hunt. We have a long history with Fricky. We've hunted with him three or four times already and now we're excited because we're gonna bring RJ, our own son, back to hunt with Fricky as well. Fricky met us there at the airport. We loaded up the vehicle and we started heading out to Fricky de Toy Safaris. Uh, I'm Fricky de Toy, owner and operator of Fricky de Toy Safaris. Uh, we're based in the northwest province of South Africa, uh, close to the Botswana border. It's about a six hour drive uh, west from Johannesburg Airport. Traveling to Africa and getting to where you're gonna actually go and hunt. I mean, it's a long journey. There's long flights involved and you're sitting in vehicles all the time. I mean, it, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. When we finally got to Africa, it was nothing what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a little bit smaller of a town. I mean, this is a huge town. You know, there's something special about going to a different country, experiencing and witnessing the different lifestyles, the, the poverty. You know, I don't care where you go in the world, you're going to witness stuff. And what an education to take your child on. When we finally got out a little farther, it started to go kind of more or less towards what all the documentaries and everything I've seen about Africa. I mean, it was an awesome feeling inside of me. I've never been to Africa, and I didn't know anything to expect. I mean, I was basically walking there blind. Just sitting here in camp, uh, Dan found this water bucket in the back. Pretty cool, just sitting there. I think it's tall. Finally, I can't wait to get out on now. You know, on any trip, when you get to camp, man, you got you got to get your equipment, you got to shoot and practice, and make sure everything's adjusted. I've never hunted dangerous game down there, and this is the first time I'm going to go down there and actually hunt for Cape Buffalo with my Hoyt. The bottom line here is understanding your equipment, and Vicky and I worked a long time to get her bow set up ready for her Cape Buffalo. I was pretty proud of myself, I have to say, to actually be able to draw 70 pounds and shoot it consistently. Now, I didn't go shoot 100 arrows every day because it would jack my shoulder up, but I was able to go ahead and get those heavy arrows, those heavy beams sighted in, and that's what I needed to do. It's hard to believe it's been over 20 years since mine and Ralph's honeymoon and our first trip to Africa. Over the years, Ralph and I, we've taken all kinds of different planes games over in Africa. Ralph's taken two Cape Buffaloes. I've never gone for any of the dangerous games. And this time, I was heading over there with my Hoyt in my hand and I was gonna go for Cape Buffalo. But the more exciting part about this trip was we're taking RJ on his very first bow hunt. He's gonna take his bow with him, along with his 10 point, but he's taking his Hoyt with him and he's gonna go after some critters in Africa with us. First afternoon here with Fricky. There's a bird inside that tree there. First afternoon here with Fricky to toy safaris in South Africa on our on RJ's first safari. But we're first afternoon. We're going out. We're gonna go see just for a game ride. See what we can see. Put up some spy point cameras so we can see where the animals are coming and what animals are going where. Well, we just pulled up, and, and this is one of Fricky's water holes, um, and he's got the feet out and everything. And there was eland, there was a pile of eland, and we saw a couple kudu bulls. 
Barracuda bulls were over there. The eland were all around here. He's got the hide right there. We just went in it. It, it looks pretty cool. We're gonna set every, try to set everything up at about a 20 yard distance and see what happens. Um. Quality high, temperature Fahrenheit, yes. Well, but Continue. we're in Africa, no. do we have to put it to Celsius on, no. so it can Leave read it? it. Would you? <laughs> all right. Okay, so we got it all? Yep. We just set up our spy point and we got the water hole. He's got the feet out. We got the hide right here. And I'm, I'm fortunate because I think if he would have made it two inches higher for the hole. I drew my, I would go like this and I'm like, ooh, Ralph might have to stand yeah. on his tippy toes. I wouldn't been able to shoot. We were just coming around the bend and all of a sudden, look, there's the other one. We saw one giraffe and now there's, the, there's another one walking right there. The yesterday. eland and the blue wildebeest. What is that, a bull? Yes, wildebeest, yeah. 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 That's, that's a pretty like. good bull. Yeah, that's a nice bull. He was there this morning. 12.30 yesterday. Kudu and Gemsbucker in that lower yeah. blind. So we thought the wildebeest were hanging out with the buffalo and they're hanging out with the, oh, the pet zebra. Oh, there's your buffalo, 7.20. Look at that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All the buffalo, they were moving at night, which was not making it easy for us to spot and stalk them. So we decided we're gonna hunt water holes late afternoon and hope they're gonna come in. Now, they got a little tricky because they have blinds set up at water holes already, but they were being really sneaky about how they were coming in. So we decided, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and set up a different blind, make a natural blind and get set up in there and see if we can't make that work. Like anywhere in certain areas, I mean, where we were with Fricky on, his, on their concession is, they're going through a drought. It's a bad deal. You could, I mean, there was no grass. There was no feed for these animals. And they're putting out lucerne and they're putting out the pellets and everything. Yes, you're supplemental feeding, but you're supplemental feeding up herds of everything. It's crazy. When you got no, no natural feed and you have all these animals, something bad's gonna happen. So you have to manage that situation. So we tried different tactics. We actually took a Gemsbuck target and put it there to hopefully relax, and it did. It worked on relaxing some of the game. We're all hunters. Use common sense and you, could, you, you won't imagine how more successful it will be. It's not scientific. The bottom line to be more successful is become a better woodsman. As we're sitting in this ground blind and we're set up over a water hole, across from this water hole is a blind that's always there that Fricky has set up for hunting over the water holes. And this evening, the way it had worked out is actually RJ and Ralph are sitting in that blind. RJ's sitting there with his Hoyt, and I get to watch him from the opposite angle shoot his first archery kill. To watch RJ, <laughs> on the first time, you know, we're in a ground blind, and he's got his Hoyt, and he's nervous. When we finally got into the blind, I, I was rushing. And we saw, we saw lots of animals. Bless buck, kudu, everything you could think of, more or less. All of a sudden, the animals are coming in and his eyes are like giant globes, man. And Vicky and Dan and Fricky are across because we had the buffalo coming in at this water hole too. So RJ and I, and we're, we're like, we don't want to ruin nothing for mommy, but here comes a bless buck. Finally, we get this blessed book to start walking up. He was basically reading off a script. He was just walking right into the water hole perfectly. RJ draws back that bow, anchors, picks his spot. Oh yeah. Shoots, and at first I thought, man, it was a little low. The reality of it was he cut everything he needed to. That ant, you saw the blood spew out. That animal and RJ was shaking, dad was shaking. I could hear mom crying across from us. It was so fun, fun. My first animal I ever took with my bow was a blessed buck in South Africa on our honeymoon in 1993. But now here we are, we're in Africa and RJ's first animal he takes with a bow is a blessed buck in Africa just like I did 20 something years ago. To share that with RJ, the buildup and the anticipation, then to be with him in the blind, and he takes his blessed buck and, proud dad. So needless to say, after he shot his blessed buck, I mean, that night hunt needed to be over. We needed to go and recover his blessed buck, and what a way to add more excitement to my buffalo hunt. 
we were trailing the, the blessed bug because we had a good blood trail. And uh, we tracked it for a while, but it, it, it got dark on us. And uh, we decided to leave it till the next morning. Fricky, he knew that it was getting kind of dark out, so we, we went back. They said it was a great shot on it. When I walked up on that thing finally that next morning, I couldn't believe what just happened. Well, RJ, there we are, buddy. <laughs> I mean, you, you shot us yesterday afternoon late. Um, we started tracking and found the blood. I mean, there where you shot it. Yeah. And we started tracking and we actually, it was dark and we still saw him move. So we just backed off. It's the best thing to do with, with a bullshit yeah. like that. Just back off and let it let it be. And then... Uh, Thankfully the hyenas didn't get it. Luckily. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. you did very well. Oh, come here. <laughs> the most important thing is spending the time with your children, getting them outdoors, getting them hunting. You don't have to go overseas. You could make a great squirrel hunt in the backyard. Make it fun, keep it a passion-driven thing, and keep this heritage alive. The buffaloes were, were coming in constantly. Um, we constructed a blind and we got in there and Vicky needs to be on her knees or either standing to draw that poundage with a bow. So we had to, to lower the blind and it's the Kalahari with the sand, it's, it's so easy to dig. So we just dug the hole and then with a the brush pile around it, Vicky could actually had an easy standing bow shot and to draw. We got this blind set up and I'm telling you, it was a little nerve wracking going and sitting in there and knowing that you're, you could possibly have Cape Buffalo within feet of you and hopefully they don't freak out and come into the blind with you. You have to remember that we're going after Black Death. We're going after the Cape Buffalo. These animals will turn on you in an instant. So you have to be prepared. Hunting them from a ground blind is a pretty awesome way of doing it. If they're coming to the water hole, all you really have to do is wait for that perfect shot. Problem is, if they don't come and present that shot or they don't come till dark, tactics got to change. The buffalo have been messing with us. So we got our trail cameras, we got our spy points out, and we're going to check to see what they're doing. Buffalo came in late. Kind of figured that a little blind didn't work. Hmm. See, there was nothing to eat. They were in late. So all the animals were already here and cleaned it up. Let's go and check the other water all quickly. Check that trail cam, then I'll, I'll tell you this afternoon they're going to be early. To do something that new, that early, um, you know, animals are not stupid. They actually tend to come later at night. We, we constructed that blind, but it just didn't work out. So uh, we decided to, to go after them. While we're out, we have Jonas behind us in the truck here. We're looking for some of the buffalo spores, some of the buffalo tracks, to see if we can get a fresh track and then see if we can't maybe get up on the buffalo and get me a shot. It's, we've been hunting them for a few days now. We had them coming into water holes. We had them on our spy point cameras, but they come in at dark. The buffalo are proving to be a little harder to come by. There's buffalo right here on the corner. Now we just got to figure out which way the wind's blowing and how we can get tapped to them without them running. I see him walking over there. Yeah, they're coming closer. We spotted the buffalo. We just gotta make a plan on how we're gonna go about to get them. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Don't ever underestimate these animals. You know, yeah, it looks like when they're coming to a water hole or they're coming to the feed that they're docile, that nothing can go wrong. The bottom line here, you're talking about an animal that in a second is gonna come after you. He's gonna charge. Cape Buffalo. Their rib cage, their anatomy is so different than anything we have here in the United States. Their ribs actually overlap all along the top side of their ribs and down. So what we need to do is we need to try to take a shot right in that sweet spot. On African animals, all of their vitals sit way much more forward than they do here in the States as well. Basically, it's predation. They have lions and leopards and everything usually jumping on their back ends. So that's why they have those overlapping ribs and all their vitals are far forward. That's the way God designed those animals was because of the predation. I need to make sure that I can go ahead, go straight up that front leg and get an arrow where I need to get it. You know, one of the things with all the, with Fricky's years and years of experience and knowledge is he knows what it takes to make it happen. One of the things that he's very, very adamant about in that staying in the line, because if people spread out, first off, there's a lot more movement, a lot of things going on. That's where these animals, these buffs, the lions, the leopards and all that, can, you can create more havoc. 38. 
And in that situation, it becomes dangerous not only for everybody, but now your pH has to worry about everybody around him. If they're in back of him, doesn't have to worry. All he's got to concentrate on is if you have a charge of making that happen. Um, I, I have my bow set up for a 20 and a 30 yard shot. I'm not going to shoot anything farther than that because I can't. Not with that setup, not with that heavy arrow. I want it close. <laughs> Fricky knows his animals. He's a PH. He knows his animals. He knows what he has to do to get close and everything about it. And most of all, we have 1,000% confidence that if something is going to go bad, we got that giant man, African man, to turn around and make it happen. I'm not afraid when I got him with me. And nor is Vicky. I just put a beam in into the chest of a Cape Buffalo. Look, I got really good penetration. It's a big body. Fricky told me to go up almost mid body. The sun is going down fast though, and we won't go chasing after a buffalo in, um, in the dark. So that's, that'd be stupid. So more than likely, if we don't find something here shortly, we're gonna pack it up, head back to camp. Early tomorrow morning, we will get up and go and find my Cape Buffalo. I can't believe that. We got up that next morning, went back on that Buffalo trail, found out that he had actually went ahead and left the herd, which was a great sign for us. We want to make sure to do the most humane thing on these animals. And if for some reason something happened and he was still up, I didn't want to hesitate. So Fricky actually gave me his 375 to take with me just in case so I could finish my own Buffalo. They're tough. Vicky, they are one of the toughest animals in Africa. Fricky, I don't know what to say. I mean, this was, um, first of all, I never thought I'd actually have my bow in my hand and shoot at a Cape Buffalo. That's kind of crazy, <laughs> especially for a girl that's thinking crazy big things like that. And what an amazing, I can't even, it's one of those things where people say, you know, what do you want to do? You know, what do you, what's on your hit list? And I didn't think Cape Buffalo, and then I started working out for it and tried to get my bow heavier and heavier. And, and you come a long way since I we just, talked about it to get yeah. to that boundage and stuff. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing, and I'm so full of emotions right now, I could just start crying again. <laughs> I could. Thank you. For <laughs> You're welcome. What can we tell you? I mean, you know, f from having that history with Fricky, seeing that he and his family are doing great. Having our own son shoot his first uh, his first critter with his bow, with his Hoyt, was a blessed buck in South Africa, which was what my first bow hunt was. Year, yeah, in 93. 20 something years ago. And then for me to be able to go ahead and get my cape with my Hoyt, that was just... I was, we were proud of you. There's a lot of emotional stuff going yep. on in this show. If you happen to see the Real Tree logo this week, ultimate in camouflage. You need to log on to archerschoice.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win some great stuff from Real Tree. Real Tree, and a lot well of other goodies. Other so we really want to thank you guys for turning in this week. We hope you turn in next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice. It, was, it was so cool to, to be there with RJ. It was. That was the best part. And Fricky and his son and the family. I mean, yeah. that's, this, that's what it's all about. It is. It was really cool. Congrats, man. Thanks. That's a big accomplishment. Thank you.